exercise for speaking clearly and not getting tongue, 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 tongue twisted. All right. <clears throat> A.T. Haggins, We Interrupt This Program, Secrets Part 2. Conversation drifted onto other topics. Heather asked if she could go over to the Daniels after they had cleaned up, and her mother agreed. Melinda and Brittany wanted to catch up on their school reading. A rumble of thunder was heard, so John got up from his chair to go look out the window. Well, shoot, he said. Looks like we're going to catch that 30% today. I'm going out and put the tools up before it starts, and I'll finish my lunch before I, when I get back inside. Robert got up to help him. They put on their hats and went out the, door, the kitchen door. After the door closed, Lisa asked Anne, Do you think he suspects? Her, co her co-conspirator grinned, No, not at all. I still think that's way too much, but since you and Luke insist, I'm not going to say no. You and he might find John is a harder sell. He's always been stiff-necked that way. Mama, we're finished with our school reading, and the rain has stopped, Melinda asked her mother. Can Britt and the I go over to the Daniels, too? Anne looked, out, Anne looked out the window at the sky, I suppose, but I want you two back before dark or, I'll, or call if you want to stay longer, but I don't want any of you coming home after dark without the 20-gauge. There's still dogs out there. Yes, ma'am, we'll be home before dark. Come on, Brittany. The girls stopped on the porch and put on their boots and ran the 400 yards down the road to the Daniels. They knocked on the kitchen door, and Kate Daniels answered. Hi, girls. Timmy's down at the creek hunting crawdads. Heather and Stevie are in the barn throwing down hay for the animals. Jake's off working with Rick today. Melinda said, Thanks, Mrs. Daniels. We'll go find Heather and Stevie. Timmy always tries to put a crawdad in my hair when he catches them. The two girls ran into the barn through the open door, heading for the ladder to the hayloft. When they reached the bottom, they yelled, Hi, Heather. Hi, Stevie. They could hear movement above, and presently Heather yelled down, Hi, we're up here. Uh, would you grab the other bale hook hanging from the stall over by the door? I forgot to bring it up. Brittany ran over and grabbed the hook and handed it to Melinda, and they climbed to the top. The girls carefully crossed the hayloft to where Stevie and Heather were standing. She was slipping a piece of pink and white fabric into her jeans pocket as Melinda rounded the corner of stacks of bales with Brittany following behind. Stevie was taking a bale of hay apart and throwing it down to the animals below. Melinda handed the hook to Heather, and she began taking down another bale. After all the animals had been fed, she said, Let's go down. It's too hot to stay up here. She, Stevie, and Brittany walked over to the ladder and began to climb down. Melinda stood for a moment, eyeing the loose hay and the stack of bales, then climbed down the ladder after them. In the living room, John sat down at the desk where the radio equipment was rigged and turned on the power to the shortwave transceiver. He pulled out the printout of frequencies that Ted had given him and began to scan them one by one until he hit a news broadcast. Al Jazeera television released videotape today showing the assassination of Sheikh Saeed Nayanan, president of the United Arab Emirates. Responsibility for this assassination was placed with fundamentalist groups opposed to the Sheikh's cooperation with the U.S. in its war on terror, but no groups as of yet have specifically been named. All six assassins were killed in the attack and its aftermath. The United States today continues to remove its forces from its former bases in Saudi Arabia two weeks after being requested by the new king to leave. Saudi government officials complained today of the slow pace of the removal but were rebuffed by U.S. Under Secretary Richard Stokes, who stated, We are simply not going to abandon our equipment and supplies on those bases, no matter how much the present Saudi government would like us to. It will take as long as it takes. Most of the troops and equipment were being moved is on its way to other U.S. bases in Bahrain, Oman, and Qatar. Chinese officials today at a Russian-Chinese co-development conference again hinted that U.S. naval losses were much heavier than were claimed by the U.S. Navy after its victory over the Navy of the People's Republic of China in the Straits of Taiwan. Precisely what these losses were was not revealed. When queried by this office, the United States Navy returned no comment. This is the English language service of Radio Moscow. We will have further news at 2200 hours. Greenwich, meantime, John nodded his head and scanned his list again. <laughs>